And what you're going to do next is you're going to get ready to start a sprint. Now to start a sprint, there are certain things that you want to have ready. So one of those things is the capacity of the team, your developers, because these are the people that are going to build the product. They are going to build working functionality. So you want to be able to know what they are able to do, what amount of work they are able to accomplish within that sprint period. Your sprint can be two weeks, it can be three weeks, it can be a month. So just um, in this um, um, expose, in this lecture, I'm just gonna stick with a two week sprint, just for easy math also. Now, just to make a little clarification on the things that I'm saying, nothing that I'm saying here is the law. There is nothing here that is brick and concrete. I just want to take a disclaimer for that. Have an open mind, be objective, and there is nothing you can use other out, you can use other means to get the same outcome. But if you are working with Scrum, I'm going a little bit with the Scrum guidelines. So what is your capacity? How do you do capacity planning? When should we do capacity planning and what are the benefits of capacity planning? We are just going to look at it based on these uh, topics here. And I have a few slides. I'm just gonna run through the slides for guidelines. Um, so, um, um, and then I have a, an Excel sheet that I'm gonna pull up too, which is going to show us a little more how capacity planning is done. So planning the capacity means to estimate and calculate the capacity or available productive bandwidth of an agile team. I don't like to read some of these things sometimes. Uh, it's very, uh, but let's start with this. I want you to think of this. We are going to, you are going into the work week and you have your work cut out for the week. And you know that you are going to be working, the, the, the work week is 40 hours. But on your regular work week, you are going to have 30 minutes here for lunch. You're going to have other meetings within the organization. So many different things are in your agenda. So within those 40 hours, you are not going to be doing, you are not going to be putting 40 hours to accomplish certain tasks that you had available for that week. So the point is, we are going to calculate the capacity of the team based on a 40 hour week. So you are considering that you work eight hours a week. Can you guys see this slide? Developer number one has eight hours for the week. The second has eight hours and so on. Let me grab my, uh, my pen here. One, these are the developers. These are your team members, the people that are actually building the product that are going to actually be building the functionality. So what you want to do is to see how many hours each person has available to put into effective work for the eight, for these two weeks of the sprint. So week one, which is right here, you see one, two, three, four, five. These are the five days for week one and the five days for week two. So we're just gonna work week one and week two. This is really simple. All you're doing is you're supposed to work eight hours a day. This is an ideal situation. If we work eight hours for these 10 days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because for a two, two week sprint, you have 10 working days. So you're going to have 80 hours available. So this is what I will call um, 
this is what I would call available capacity. This is what is available. Everybody has eight hours in this diagram here. Now, at, if you take these, these uh, developers, you're going to see that the 520 here is going to be the total number of hours that each one of them will have for this time period. Okay. Now, we are going to look at another scenario. You have eight hours a day, but you don't work all the eight hours. Okay. A regular scrum master, you're going to have your daily scrum. You're going to have a grooming meeting. You have sprint planning meeting. You have sprint review. You have sprint demo. All these are things happening at some point in time within a two-week time frame. So we are not going to be allocating 80 hours dedicated to building products. I want everyone to be very clear about that before we move on. This, I know the questions are not going to be complex. Do each and everyone understand your available hours and the difference I'm trying to make about hours that you are going to consecrate for building the product? Is that clear? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's very good. So now what is going to happen? You are going to take away you are going to take away the ceremony time. I'm calling ceremony time here is the amount of hours that you're going to spend on those, the daily scrum, workshops, and so on and so forth. When you do that, then the remaining hours that you are going to dedicate to building features and for user stories for the sprint is going to be this one here, the last column here. Okay? Does that make sense? So you... Um, let me take my pen here again. You are quiet. I just want to make sure that you are understanding it. You, you have 40 hours for the week. But within those 40 hours, you're going to take away five hours for meetings, uh, 15 minutes for your daily scrum, another workshop, take 30 minutes, and so on and so forth. So you take away five hours and you end up with 35 hours for the first week. Say the same thing happens for the second week. Instead of another five hours here, you're going to end up with 70 hours. You're going into work. You're going to spend 80 hours at your workplace. But what you are going to have available to allocate for the sprint is just going to be 70 hours. Do you understand that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So yes. the capacity that you are going to have to be able to allocate for the sprint is going to be 70. Now, to make it really, really good, what the team can do is you take this 70 hours and you say, well, something might happen. Some stories might not have been properly broken down. You go in thinking that this story is five points, but then something happens. Maybe we run out, there is a storm, the database is down, you lose a couple of days or you lose some hours. What you want to do is create again a little buffer here. Okay? So you're going to say, let us put aside 5% or 10%. This is going to depend on how you guys want to work. So when you do that, you're going to say, okay, if we take away 10% of 70, which is seven, they're going to end up with 63 hours. So this is going to be the ideal capacity for each team member. That is what they're going to be working with. This is so simple that sometimes 
when you look at it, you start saying to yourself that, hey, is that what all capacity planning is all about? It sounds kind of complex and this and that. It is not complex. It's simple. Sorry, let me... You consider the holidays, you consider the uh, workshops that you have, you consider the ceremonies and the events, and you take that away from the number of hours that you have available for the week. When that is done, then you are able to have the real hours that you are going to be actually putting in for building of that product. Yes. The five hours, I'm sorry, I think I missed something. The, the five hours that brought you down to 65, what was the five hours for? Now, Caroline, I'm saying that five hours here, 40, you have a 40 hour work week, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when you go into work for 40 hours, for us looking at them, um, you're going to have a daily scrum, which is going to be 15 minutes. You're going to have a little uh, team building workshop, maybe uh, or the, that same day, maybe you are having a product backlog grooming. So you are not putting eight hours every day to build a product. The actual time that you're going to spend in actually working on features and functionalities is just going to be 35 hours for the week because out of five hours for that week, you are doing something else. Okay. Got is it. that understood? Yes, thank you, sir. Okay, excellent. Let us clear up this. Uh... So when you have your final capacity, I just want to make sure that everything falls in place. When you do your product backlog grooming and you have identified, you have prioritized your stories, now remember that your stories are going to be estimated and giving story points. You are moving into the sprint with story points. Now, when you start breaking down, when you go into the sprint, you have the why, the what, and the how. Why are we doing the sprint? What is the product goal? What is the product vision? What does the product roadmap look like? What our releases look like? You have all kinds of good reasons. What is the product that we are building? And so on and so forth. What are we going to build for the sprint? These are the features that you have taken from your product backlog, and you've created your sprint backlog with. That is the what. Now you have the why, which is the third part. Now this is how are you going to build these features? So we are going to break down those features into tasks and each developer is going to have a task that they are going to be executing within the sprint. Now these tasks can be estimated into hours. So when you look at your sprint burn down chart, on the uh, Y axis, you're going to have your hours, and on the X axis, you're going to have your time frame. So we are going to start our so we are going, going to, start to start our sprint on the Y axis. We're going to have 300 and 318 hours. So as we walk through the task, we are looking at what we are accomplishing every hour based on these figures. So that is how your capacity works into the, the uh, effort and what you are looking to realize within the sprint. Does anyone have any questions? Because this is important, this area here, understanding why you do the capacity planning and how that fits into the sprint. I've given you a real nice breakdown. When you go into the sprint, once you create the sprint backlog, you have stories and once you are doing your planning, you are looking at those stories, you are looking at your capacity. And you make sure that whatever functionalities or whatever increment you are looking to achieve is going to be doable based on your capacity. I think I should pause now and we should actually uh, be a little, let's, let's ask some questions, let's discuss it. Um, um, anyone can chime in a little. So 